Hey guys, Dr. Brown here with Kubo Math coming to you from Tarlock City, Philippines. Hopefully everyone's had a good day and you're ready to jump into some Calculus 1 differentiation. Let's rock on with this. Okay, first let's look at the rate of change of a constant. You may be thinking, oh, they don't change. Well, how do we know that? How can we prove that? So let's say we have a function. Uh, let's say y equals 1. So I've got y and x. And we're going to look at that between x equals 1 until x equals 3. Well, what is the slope of something? You learned in Algebra 1, or Algebra 1 and 2, it's the change in y over the change in x. Well, that equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So M in this case, we have x is 3, x sub 2 is 3, x sub 1 is 1. So what is y at this value of x? Well, it's 1. Okay, it's 1 minus y sub 1, which is 1 also. So 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 minus 1 is 2. So my slope of that constant function is zero. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's say I have a, a function that's y equals 2x plus 1. We also learn that y equals mx plus b of a linear equation. And m in that equation is 2. My y-intercept is b, and it's 1 when x is 0. But in calculus, we don't say that as the slope per se. It is the slope, but we call it the derivative of a function. So how can I take the derivative of that function with respect to x? So let me clean out a spot here. So we know the slope is 2. All right, I'm, I'm assuming now, we're starting, you'll notice in chapter 2, that in your calculus or out late algebra, you had limits. You studied limits. So the limit is when something is approaching a number, it's not quite there, but it's almost there. What's the value of the function at that point? Now, that also, if I take f of x equals y, so y equals f of x, but then f prime of x, the derivative of that equation with respect to x, it's also noted as derivative with respect to x. So I'm taking the derivative of f of x, f prime of x, or derivative of that equation with respect to x, that equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I'm, I'm sure in your study of limits you've had this. Okay, wherever I have x in this equation, I'm going to replace it with x plus h. Okay, so I have everything over h, and this is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 times x plus h plus 1 minus 2x plus 1, all in parentheses, all over h. So now let me distribute the 2 inside. So the limit is h approaches 0. 2 times x is 2x plus 2 times h, which is 2h, plus 1, minus, now the, the negative gets distributed inside the parentheses. Negative times 2x is minus 2x, minus 1, all over h. You'll notice 2x minus 2x, they cancel. Positive 1 and negative 1 cancels. I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2h over h. Ah, 
H divided by H is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Wow, that's like reaching around the back of your head to scratch your elbow. It seems like a long way to get to that answer. Is there a, a, an easier way or a different way to do that? Yes, there is. Okay, it's called the power rule. Let's say f of x equals ax to the n. The power rule says if I want to take the derivative of that function, it equals the exponent times ax to the n minus 1. I decrease the exponent by 1. Let's say my, well, let's take that entire function. So let's take if f of x is 2x plus 1, and I want to take the derivative of that with respect to x of that equation, there's also a rule out there that says I can take the derivative of the first one plus the derivative of the second one, and that's okay. I'll, I'll put out a video of, of differentiation rules in coming days. Just know that's the case. So let's take the derivative of this using the power rule. So I have 2x to the first power. So now, and I want to take the derivative of that with respect to x. So that's 1 times 2 times x to the 1 minus 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. x to the 1 minus 1 is x to the 0. Anything to the 0th power, any number, is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Now the derivative of a constant, we've already learned earlier, that's, you know, the rate of change of that constant or derivative is 0. So it's 2 plus 0, so my answer is 2. This is just the limit approach to finding the derivative of or rate of change, or m, the slope, all the same. And this is the power rule method of finding the, the derivative or slope. So in coming days, as I mentioned, I'll put out more videos um, where we're trying to start the calculus piece. Eventually, I want to start a trig um, set of videos. But for now, I'll try to get one or two calculus videos out per week. Try to get ahead of the teachers in school. Actually, that's why I started also at chapter two. You'll be in chapter one right now, probably learning about the limits. So this video will come in handy probably in the coming weeks for you as you get into that uh, more in-depth uh, derivative calculations. So that's all for now. Let's keep working together. Study your math. Study the rules because together we can make a better tomorrow through math. Take care. Have a great evening. Thank you.